Alrighty, what's up everyone? Today we are uh, installing a automatic transmission emulator into this IS300 here. Um, I tried to wire it in myself with like barely any diagrams or anything and it didn't work. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I can figure it out. I, I couldn't figure it out. Um, took me forever to find some proper diagrams. I finally found them. Um, basically they're like kind of nowhere on online on the public internet. They're in a Facebook group called IS300 help and there's two different types in the files tab and I also had someone comment on one of my posts in there giving me one for an 01 and that's the one I'm going to be basing it off of and I also I will also if I have his permission slap it on the screen right here so it's kind of easier to find in the public basis but if you do own an IS300 I recommend getting on that Facebook group there's lots of information lots of stuff in the files tab too like full service diagrams and all that so definitely a really helpful group if you own an IS, but um, yeah, I'm just going to wire it in based off of the uh, diagrams and kind of take you along for the ride. So let's dive into it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started here. First thing you want to do is you want to unplug your battery. That is top priority. Um, and then second thing you want to do is pull up this harness. So I pulled up the harness and I disconnected the connectors that were connected to the other, uh, I believe this is the chassis harness right here. So I had more room to kind of work with and play with here. And we're gonna go ahead and kind of dive into this. So I went ahead and I already got the first wire in. And I'm gonna try and have you guys follow along here. If you have an 01, you can follow this along. If you have an 02 or higher, you need to uh, find a different pin out because the ECU changes. But this will give you a rough idea of what you need to do. So. It goes, the emulator gets wired up like this. You have, um, if the red is on the left, that's how it should be. It's one, two, three, four, five through 12 right here. Um, so yeah, so this will be pin number one and also most of the write-ups are colored. So first one, pin number one, first thing it goes to is uh, plus B, which I believe is just a positive. And with that, um, the first three wires, let me double check that. Okay, scratch that. The first two wires and wire number six, which is the white. So the red, black, and white need to be tapped and not cut. So you need to keep the existing wire that's going to the ECU and to the harness. So I'm going to use vampire splices for those. I'm not a fan of them. They look super ugly and super tacky, but it's definitely one of the easiest ways to take a a splice or a tap into it because all you do is you take your existing wire slide it into the end that doesn't come out and then you slide your um, chassis wire over it crimp it down cap it off and you're good you have a solid connection so I'm only going to use this on the three wires that need to be tapped and everything else I'm going to cut and replace and then I'm also going to be installing these three uh, 25 ohm resistors or I believe they're 10 ohm resistors yes 10 ohm 25 watt resistors um, for the three solenoids and this will get rid of your check engine lights um, this all this does is get rid of it being in limp mode make the car actually perform like it should so um, yeah so first things first we're going to wire in the wires that need to be tapped and then we're gonna finish up um, doing the rest I'm gonna try my shot at these heat shrink butt connectors. I've had some good luck with them in the past. Um, so we're gonna see how they do in here. I'm slightly worried about the engine heat, but at the same time I'm not because if the engine heat was hot enough to melt solder in this location, your ECU would be destroyed. So I feel like we're gonna be a-okay right here. OK, 
Okay, that worked out really well, so I think I'm going to use that for all of them. Okay, we now have the red, the white, and the black wires hooked up. So now I'm just gonna go in numerical order of the emulator um, and kind of keep working it out from there. And then once I get the emulator fully wired, I'm gonna wire in the resistors. camera died, or not died, but turned off because it time lapse auto shuts off. Um, so I don't know where we left off, but uh, I have the whole thing wired, the emulator, and I just double checked all the connections. You gotta be fucking kidding me. And um, we're going to try and crank it real quick, make sure it still starts, and then go from there. Because if it doesn't start, i got to troubleshoot it. If it does start, I'm going to wire in the resistors and fix the speedometer. So let's go from there.
Okay, this thing's lighting up, which is good. It's supposed to. But it's not cranking, and I think that's because of the park position sensor, so... E4 pin 26. Grab my voltmeter. E4 pin 26. Should be receiving 12 volts right now. Well, why the hell is it not turning over then? Okay, so is the battery too dead? No. Okay, now I gotta dive into this a little bit more. A few moments later. Oh, bro. Wow, I'm a dumbass. I'm a motherfucking dumbass. You know, it might help if you plug in the connectors that you unplugged. Oh man, I really hope this is it. I'm gonna feel really stupid if it is, but I'm gonna feel really happy at the same time. Okay, the camera's almost dead, and um, I still need to wire in the resistors. I got the car to start, which is really awesome, and it was really, it was just the connections, but whatever. Um, yeah, so I'm going to wire in the resistors now, and I'm also going to fix the uh, fix the speedometer, wire in that, those steps. I'm just not going to time lapse it because the camera's almost dead, and I will update you guys uh, when I'm finished with that. Hopefully I can finish it tonight, but we will see. Okay, so we got the uh, resistors wired in, and they work. Um, so now I'm going to try and tidy this up a little bit. I don't think I'm really going to clean up the wiring a whole lot, just because it's kind of a mess. I might run a couple zip ties, but I'm not, it's not. We're not going show quality pretty here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some 3M tape though, and stick these, uh, stick the emulator into this lid, and also get the resistors onto this lid as well. So. Wish me luck on that. Hopefully I can get it how I want to get it. At least this just get hot. Holy crap. Ta-da. Hopefully you can see that. Got everything 3M taped to the back of this lid. Gonna get her screwed down and then we're calling it a night. Ta-da. Alrighty. That'll be it for this one. Um, hopefully I provided you with enough information to get you what you need to get help. Um, I also realized uh, while investigating and finishing this up that if you have a, an O2 Plus, you actually don't need to do this. All you got to do is get a manual ECU and then your harness plugs right in. It's They change after O1. So everything I was saying about, you know, if you have an O2, you need to look it up. Now just get a manual harness, get a manual ECU, plug it in your harness, you're done. That's it. So. Yeah, it's plug and play and super easy to go. When we actually did the manual swap, um, his original car was an O2, so we had to swap the engine harness, which sucked. Because if this, if the chassis was an O1 or an O2, I mean, and the and the swap car was an O2, it would have been so much simpler. But it is what it is. We got it taken care of, um, and that's it for this one. So uh, subscribe if this helps you. I'm gonna I'm gonna make y'all subscribe or at least comment. Um, but I don't care if you don't watch my videos. If you can just like help me get my subscriber number up, that would be amazing. Just just as a thank you for helping me or whatever. But yeah, like, comment, do all that fun stuff. And uh, stick around if you like the stuff. And we'll see you for the next one.